I was just a child and I saw sisters inhabit for the first time. They came to our little, a small town. I was from a very little isolated Arizona town and uh, worked with the sisters. They, I mean, I was just a child. They, they, they taught me for just a couple of years. But one day I looked at them and thought, wow, they are so special. And it just came to me, I'd like to do that when I grow up. And I ran home, couldn't wait to tell my aunt, who was very religious. And she said, oh, honey, you don't want to do that. That would be a sad life. You would not have children. You would not have a husband. You don't want to do that. I said, OK, my aunt should know. And I don't remember thinking about that anymore until um, I was a member of a small faith community in Arizona. And that faith community was an incredible step for me. We walked together for 20 years. And in those 20 years, um, I saw that there was another dimension to the faith. I found the living with, living with these people because we spent a lot of time together. Uh, taught me how to put the, the scriptures into action, to live out um, the forgiving, the, the loving, the, all that the, that the Christ, has, has, Christ has called us to do. And we made several trips together. One of those was um, World Youth Day, as, as I went to four of them, four different World Youth Days. In Colorado in, in 1993, I had a wonderful experience. I was very touched by the whole, the whole trip. At one point, we were in a beautiful cathedral, and I, was, I discovered this beautiful statue of Our Lady. Our Lady was standing behind a young Jesus, a boy Jesus, her, hand, her fingers on her, his shoulders. I had to go take a closer look. I'm, I'm into art. And I thought, this is so realistic and so beautiful. I knelt in front of Our, our Lady, and I was just so moved that I asked her, what can I do? You brushed his hair. You taught him. You encouraged him. What can I do? What's my place in, this, in, this, in my life? What is it God calls me to do? And just at that moment, our group leader called us back, called all the group back together. And so we sat together. And he said, someone here is being called to the religious life. Would you stand? And it just struck me immediately. And I stood to my surprise. I thought, what am I doing? I thought I'm, I was already, let me see, how old had I been? 40-something, late 40s. And I stood up and I thought, I'm too late. It's too late for a religious life at this point. But my friends embraced me. Everybody was so thrilled that, that I was standing. And, and I just thought, OK, God, where do I go from here? And then I, I visited a couple of convents from then, from that point. Um, like I said, it wasn't something that I was looking for. I wasn't looking for that. But it just hit me at that point, and I pursued it. Um, I went and made an experience in two different um, cloisters. I loved it. But because of my age, living in a cloister is not easy. I saw that giving up everything on the outside and, um, and living together like that is not easy. They had a whole wing, both convents had a whole wing of elderly sisters. So they're very cautious about bringing in elderly, older people. They need young people. So in the end, that was the reason I wasn't able to stay with either one. I am an Augustinian Recollect missionary sister. 
I didn't know that's what I was going to be when I came. I was invited uh, by someone who had been looking for sisters uh, to join that order for a long time. And so she was very persistent. 12 years passed before I got a call from Topeka, Kansas saying, come to Topeka, we're looking for sisters. I said, oh gosh, that was a long time ago. I'm 55 now. <laughs> there is no way to come, I'm 80. So I came, so I came. This is the same sister that harassed me into coming. She wouldn't stop calling after I said no. Uh, she was an incredible woman and um, I'm forever in debt to her for having called me. I'm, um, I wasn't looking for this. God always has a better plan than we do. Um, I came in 05. I, I took vows immediately, but those were temporary vows. Um, this was all new to me. I was learning as I went. And then I, for five years then, I served in the parish and learned more and more about St. Augustine and the way uh, uh, his rule. And so in, um, in 2010, I took my vows, my final vows. My impression of Sister Rebecca is a woman of God who has great devotion to the Lord and loves people. She radiates a sense of joy. She's wonderful to be around and she has uh, a, a mature sense about her life and about uh, her relationship with others, others because of just the joy in her heart. And she, she wants that joy to be felt for others to experience the same love that she has for God. Um, right now, I kind of do all kinds of little things. Uh, my, my two most, um, I guess, uh, important jobs right now are taking care of the sick, uh, visiting the sick, uh, and bringing to them communion on Saturdays and Sundays. And um, I teach art and um, the Catechese of the Good Shepherd at, uh, at Holy Family School. Uh, days are different. Um, some nights I will work as a, a, a catechist for our students here that are not going to Catholic school. Uh, teaching on Wednesday nights, sometimes I'm, I might do another, another little work like help out on a Thursday also. Um. What, what does she give? What does she add? She adds the dimension of, of uh, a, a tremendous amount of love and dedication uh, to her parish, to her community, and uh, to the church at large. I thought, Father, I've already lived my life. I'm 55. Am I giving you the scraps, the leftovers? I just didn't feel sure that it was right. And I met a wonderful priest, Father Bob Conroy, who, like many other people in my life, made a huge difference. He gave me a week-long retreat. I had no doubt. At the end, I was so incredibly surprised and happy to know this was right and it was the time. So I was able to enter into my vows wholeheartedly, knowing, all right, you asked for this, Lord, I'm here. Do what you would do. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that, that I had that, that certainty at that point in my life.